he needs his vote pulled immediately. And I'll say, I don't care. The leader, the boss, where is Josh Heupel? The largest humans he can find. You got Miami and Georgia and Florida State and Tennessee and Texas and Texas A&M. Uh, Kirby wants you. LSU and Ole Miss. Not even a football player, but he's 6'10", 334. Kirby said, sign me up. That's all they've got to offer when it comes to a defensive player. What could they possibly say other than how down do you have to be for a win? Let us pay you. All they got to be is enormous. What could they possibly say? Knock the team out, West. Oh, well. They'll take him if they're lowly rated, too. I'm not some guy who's some Big Ten homer. Behind that, I will never find it acceptable. I want to see it, man. Because they've got nothing else to go. Hey, welcome to Junk on College Football. So happy you could join me today. It's set, guys. The first 12-team playoff field. I cannot wait. This sucker looks amazing. There are some glaring errors. Uh, some real problems that we got with it, no doubt. But we're going to have some amazing games coming up here. And it is so exciting to have these games on campuses in round one. Wish it could be like that the whole way through. It's not. Whatever. They're going to make some tweaks. In two years, it's going to look a little different. Unfortunately, it's probably going to add a couple teams, which I don't like. When we look at how this played out, we've still got teams that got left out that could be in there. That could potentially even win it all, I think, in, in some people's minds. And I like that. I like that it matters that much that the guys that got left out could still have possibly had a run. When you get all those guys in, then you lose that debate. And how much fun was it the last four weeks of the season talking about those teams at the very end, who was going to make it? I loved it. I loved the way it worked out. I thought it was totally fair. Obviously, some glaring issues. But first, let's go over what we saw this weekend in the championship game. So the conference championship games, obviously they matter a lot when you got a team trying to play themselves in like the ACC championship game with Clemson trying to play themselves in Clemson, a three loss team. And officially now we have a three loss regular season team in the playoff. We go back to taking this system 25 years, the beginning of the BCS. I took this, this system right here, ran the data all the way back to the beginning of the BCS. And 51% of the time, we are going to have a three-loss regular season team in. 27% of the time, more than one. So we knew this was coming. A lot of people just didn't really factor it in and couldn't believe that there were going to be three-loss teams in here. And in the end, it doesn't end up being someone like Bama getting in with three losses, uh, getting you know the at-large bid. It ends up being Clemson playing themselves in a 56-yarder to beat SMU. And they both get in, and they should have. SMU should not have gotten knocked out based on losing that postseason game uh, because that is a postseason game, in my opinion. Um, you know, you got the regular season, and after that, should you knock a team out or should you penalize a team that has to play one extra game? And I don't think you should because they're already being penalized a ton. SMU, Texas, and Penn State, three teams that lost yesterday their conference championships that are in the playoffs. Those teams are already penalized more than everybody else because now their path is 17 games to win a national championship. Everybody else's is 16. In addition, they get one week's less rest than teams like Ohio State and Indiana and Notre Dame who didn't play in a conference championship. So they're already punished twice. If you punish them again, and say, let's say, and I was right about this, that Penn State was not going to drop below Ohio State if they lost to Oregon. Ohio State fans were saying, well, Ohio State beat them head-to-head, -head, and now they'll have the same amount of losses. They shouldn't have moved below them. Uh, you can talk about whether or not you feel they should have been ranked ahead of them moving in before the, the game, but they should not have moved below them because if you do that, then you disincentivize these teams from wanting to play in those championship games and while they're still part of the system, you have to incentivize it. You have to make them want to go and win, or we're going to have this final week, this championship week, um, be terrible. It's going to suck. The whole point of being a college football fan is seeing big games and having fun, and I want to see those games matter while they're still part of it. Now, it would be better if they included them in the playoff or got rid of them entirely, but while we still got them here in this current rendition, we want to make them matter. And we want to see good games. And we sure saw them. The ACC game was great. The SEC game, Georgia, Texas. Georgia comes in as the underdog. Don't know why, but they were. And right out of the gate, 
Texas is kind of destroying Georgia in the entire first half of the game, but can't score points. It's six to three at halftime. Carson Beck gets injured to end the first half. And you come out in the second half with Gunnar Stockton as the quarterback of Georgia, who didn't play great, but a little bit of a different look. And the Georgia offense looks much better. Georgia ends up winning the game in overtime. And Carson Beck, with his limp arm, walks in uh, for one play to hand it off to uh, to Travis or Trevor Yetian, whichever one is the younger one. And he scores the touchdown to win the game. Dogs are the SEC championships. And they hold Texas from winning that SEC championship in their first year in the SEC, which is a point of pride. I like it. Good on the dogs for it. You don't ever want that to happen. Conversely, in the Big Ten, they allowed Oregon to walk in year one, go undefeated, and win the Big Ten championship. Shame on Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan, anybody who has any stones for carrying the torch of the Big Ten uh, for allowing Oregon to come in and do that. And congrats to Oregon. A great season, a regular season capped off by beating Penn State in Indianapolis. But really, I came out of that game thinking, more of Penn State than I have at any point in three years. I did not think that Penn State would be able to hang with them like that. I didn't think Penn State had it in them to score that many points. And now as we look forward to the playoff, Penn State with the ridiculously easy draw they got, looks like they might be able to make it into potentially the, the semifinals, really. And let's pull that bracket up one more time. Down at the bottom right, you've got Penn State who now welcomes in SMU, a team from Dallas, into Happy Valley in mid-December, late December. And they're going to be huge favorites. And then you've got, if they win that game, Boise State waiting on them. And we have talked about this playoff format forever. Obviously, a lot of people said for a long time, you want these teams to have those bye weeks and be seated in the top four, the top four conference champions because you want those to matter, those championship games to matter. And I've been saying forever, no, this is ridiculous. You might end up with really crappy teams in there, and it throws everything off. And sure enough, it has. Because when you look at a team like Penn State, who lost to both Oregon and Ohio State, they have a much easier path now because of this ridiculous system than both Ohio State and Oregon. Ohio State and Tennessee have the toughest path here. Whoever wins that game goes and plays Oregon, then potentially Texas, then potentially or then potentially Georgia in the final. Like they could honestly, if you just want to say Tennessee, Tennessee could have a path that goes Ohio State, Oregon, Texas, and Georgia. The top four odds on favorites to win the national championship when we started. And up until two weeks ago, Tennessee's got an opportunity to run the most crazy gauntlet to a national championship that you've ever seen. Um, Ohio State has the opportunity to go Tennessee, Oregon, uh, Texas, Georgia, which would be just crazy when you look at Ryan Day, who is, you know, lost the fan base at Ohio State, and now this dude got that crazy draw, which is kind of a win-win for the Ohio State fan base. Either he flames out, loses to an SEC team in Tennessee at home, and then that will be three years in a row losing to Michigan and an SEC team ending the season when he did it, lost to Georgia in 22, lost to Missouri in 23, and then Tennessee in 24. Uh, so those fans will get their way. And on the other end of it, Ryan Day's got a chance to totally dig himself out of it should he be able to, let's say, get through Tennessee, Oregon, and then one more and make it to the national championship through a gauntlet. It wouldn't have worked for him on the other end of it with a Penn State bracket, beating SMU and Boise State. Like that wouldn't have done it for him, but he's got an opportunity to do it. When you look at the opposite side of the bracket from Oregon, Georgia's side, it is way easier. Now, this Georgia team obviously has issues, but they're like zombies, man. You got to kill them. Who can over there? Who has the ability to kill Georgia? Does Notre Dame or Indiana have the ability to kill Georgia? Does Boise State or SMU or Penn State? I just can't see it, guys. I can't see any of them having the ability to kill Georgia on that side of the bracket. 
I know a lot of people are starting to come around and believe in Notre Dame. It's tough because we've just not seen him against any high-level competition. I, the, the loss to NIU is so far behind me. And honestly, my opinion on a loss like that to a really crappy team is it doesn't matter if it is a Mac school or if it is a school like Northwestern. If you go out and you lay an egg and you lose to a crappy team, it's all the same. You went and lost to a crappy team. I don't care how crappy they are. We see teams do it every year. A couple of three, four teams lose to a just a god-awful team they shouldn't lose to. And it doesn't matter how bad that team is. You went out. It all has the same recipe. You go out. You play like crap. You don't take the team seriously. You're looking forward to next week. And you get caught slipping. And that's what happened in Notre Dame. My question is, how good they are? How are they? Like, we have not seen them play against a top-tier team. And, yes, they went down and beat Texas A&M in Mike Elko's very first game ever as the head coach of Texas a and I'm like, how much stock can we put in that? By the way, a four loss A&M team who I think is pretty good. They certainly weren't at that point, And they definitely weren't when Connor Wegman was the quarterback. Um, so I just don't know how good that Notre Dame team is. Are they good enough to line up head to head against Georgia and beat them? I don't think they are. That's my, that's my guess, but we just don't know for sure. But I don't think anybody on that side of the bracket can, can kill Georgia, even with the quarterback situation they've currently got, which we have no idea what's going on. They're just that much more talented than Penn State and Notre Dame, in my opinion. And those are the only two that could potentially give them a game. I think Notre Dame is going to smoke Indiana. Um, and I'm basing that just off of Indiana's performance against Ohio State. I don't think that Indiana can compete against teams with that kind of athlete and Notre Dame, not quite the level of Ohio State when it comes to that department, but vastly, uh, vastly superior to Indiana. And you got them at, at Notre Dame Stadium. Just don't see it happening. But there is clearly one side of this bracket that's way better. And to be honest with you, Arizona State, I now think, has potential to maybe win a game. And I never thought they would have. But when we look at this system, with Boise State getting a bye and Arizona State getting a bye, and we think back, like, let's remember all the different renditions and proposals they had for this thing. Like, they sat and went through meeting after meeting and looked at this format and approved it, knowing this could full well happen. And now when you see it come to fruition, everybody hates it because it's unbalanced everything. Like, it's not just giving a team in Boise State the opportunity to, to get a bye week, which on its own is ridiculous, but whatever you could say, okay, whatever, who cares? Boise gets a buy, whatever. But the fact that it just ruined the entire bracket by giving a team like Penn state, this, this cakewalk of a route, it's just ridiculous. But I can say as a fan of a team in this playoff, I certainly would not want my route to go SMU Boise state. Um, that that's not something I would enjoy personally. I'm juiced to see big games. That's what I love. I like them out of conference uh, to start the season. I like them to end the season, and I can't wait for some of these matchups. Clemson, Texas. That one's going to be awesome. Clemson, a team who, who has sucked. They looked pretty good last night. They looked pretty good. I think they can give Texas a game. And uh, you got to wonder, is there a point in this playoff where Sark ends up going to Arch? Because Quinn Ewers just doesn't look like the dude that we all thought he would be um, this season. And uh, maybe you didn't. I, I thought I got a soft spot for Quinn yours. I like the dude a lot, but man, he just, um, he's kind of been kind of a letdown and he, he didn't look like that dude last night against Georgia. I'm waiting for Sark to, uh, to pull the old, uh, I was at the game, the national championship game, Alabama and Georgia when Saban pulled uh, Jalen Hurts and put in Tua, but we didn't know what happened. We weren't watching the telecast. We thought that there must have been an injury. We didn't realize that he actually pulled him because, you know, at the game we had no commentary. But um, could we see Sark do something like that? It would be amazing. Anyway, guys, I am so jacked for this thing. I am a guy who did not want it. I didn't want this playoff. I thought it would ruin the regular season for me, not for you, but for me. I thought it would take away some of my enjoyment of the regular season. I was wrong. I loved this regular season, and I cannot wait for the playoff. 
Um, I'll be back soon. Talk to you guys then. Please subscribe to the new channel. Jack and College Football app.